My name is Colleen and I'm an educator at the St. Louis Art Museum. Welcome to We Wednesday. Today we're going to be talking about, hmm, what are we going to be talking about today? I think I forgot. Hmm, hmm, hmm. All right. We're going to be talking about you. We're going to be talking all about you, your likes, your dislikes, and what makes you special. We'll start by reading a story together, then we'll be looking at some art from the museum's collection, and we'll end by making our own art together. Feel free to pause the video at any time if you'd like to get a closer look, if you'd like to talk about something with the people that you're with, or if you need to gather smart supplies. Are you ready? Let's get started. Today, we're going to be reading a story called You Matter. If you've joined me for We Wednesday before, you may know that when I read a new book, I like to take a look at the cover to see if I can find out some things about the story before I read. Let's take a look at this cover together. What do you notice? I see a few different clues on this cover. I see lots of children around this big round shape that's very colorful. And I notice that they're each holding the end of this shape, which is making me think that it might be one of those big parachutes that you can lift up together and then lower down. And I even see a child going underneath the parachute. Have you ever used one of these before? What do you think the story might be about based on what we can see? Let's find out. You Matter by Christian Robinson. Usually on one of the first pages of a book, there's a dedication from the author. And this is often a place for an author to tell its readers who the book is for or to thank someone special. And I wanted to read the dedication that Christian Robinson, who wrote this book, wrote to you. It says, for anyone who isn't sure if they matter, you do. The small stuff, too small to see. This is a microscope. It looks like this child is looking through the microscope. So a microscope is a tool that you can use to look at things that are way too small to see with your own eyes. Looks like that's what we can see through the microscope there. Have you ever used a microscope before? What do you think it would be like to look through one? Those who swim with the tide and those who don't. What kinds of sea creatures can you see here? Where do you think this little one is going? Let's make our own fish with our hands. So you can take your hands, put them together and make your own little fish and have them swim in the ocean your fish going to go with the tide or are they going to go off and do their own thing? Do you ever like things or do things that are maybe different from other people? Maybe different from your family or your friends or your community? It's okay to like your own things and to do your own things. That's what makes you unique. Let's keep going. The first to go and the last. You matter. When everyone thinks you're a pest. Do you know what kind of bug that is? I think it might be a mosquito. When something is just out of reach. Uh-oh, what happened here? I think that mosquito might have bitten this dinosaur. Have you ever been bitten by a mosquito before and tried to swat it away? How did that feel? How do you think the mosquito might feel?
when everyone is too busy to help. You matter. If you fall down, that's a very long way to go. If you have to start all over again, even if you are really gassy, you matter. What do you notice about this picture? So this is actually a picture of the sun. And it may sound silly, but the sun is really gassy, as the picture says. The sun is actually one big ball of gas. Sometimes home is far away. What do you notice this person's holding? Sometimes, someone you love says goodbye. Have you ever missed someone who had to go away? How did that make you feel? Sometimes, you feel lost and alone, but you matter. The first to go, and the last. The small stuff, too small to see. What do you think might be too small to see on this page? Maybe these tiny little ants that are underground. Maybe the next time you're outside, you can take a look around and see if there's anything that might be too small to see if you're not paying attention, like these ants. You matter. to think about your favorite part of the story and talk about that with the people that you're with. We're going to travel to the museum now to look at some works of art. I want you to imagine how you might get there. Since we're talking about ourselves and our likes and our interests today, I want you to decide how you're going to get to the museum today. So think about the most wonderful form of transportation to you. Do you have that form of transportation in your mind? If you'd like, you can close your eyes and imagine yourself going. Whew, that was a really unique journey today that we all took all by ourselves. I'm really glad that we made it. In order to get ready to look at our works of art, we're going to be doing an experience I'm calling our Mindfulness Minute. Mindfulness is taking the time to slow down and really pay attention to what you're doing. We're going to be using a tool throughout the rest of our time together to help us be mindful and help us think about what we like about ourselves. We're gonna use a mirror today, and it could be a handheld mirror like the one I have here, or it could be a mirror that's on the wall in your home. Anything will work. So I want you to find your mirror. If you'd like, you can pause the video so that you can go find your mirror and place it in front of you once you have it. Once you have your mirror and you're all set up, we're going to begin by closing our eyes if it feels comfortable, and we're gonna take a big deep breath in through our nose out through our mouths. <sighs> let's try that again, but this time, let's do it a little slower. Ready? Deep breath in through your nose. And out through your mouth. <sighs> now, I want you to take a look in the mirror. What do you see? Look 
really closely at yourself. What do you notice? I want you to think about something that you like about yourself. Maybe you like your eyes or your hair. Or maybe you like that you're an excellent musician or soccer player or artist or storyteller. Or maybe you like that you love to laugh or run or jump. Or maybe you love that you're an excellent friend and a helper to those around you. There are so many things to like about yourself. So once you have that one thing in your mind that you really love about yourself, I want you to look in the mirror and we're gonna say, I love that thing about ourselves. Are you ready? Have that thing in your mind and you're gonna say, I love, and you fill in the blank. How did that feel to say that out loud to yourself? you'd like, you can think about all the other things that you love about yourself because there's so many things to love. We're going to end by giving ourselves a big hug if it feels comfortable. So you can give yourself a nice big squeeze. And if you'd like, you can sway back and forth. Thank you for taking the time to give yourself some love today. It's really important. I feel much more ready to look at some really amazing works of art. We're going to look at some works of art from the museum's collection together. If you'd like, you can scroll down on the page to get a closer look at the images we'll be viewing. Feel free to pause the video at any time to do this. Take a close look at this work of art. What do you see? What do you notice about this person's clothing and surroundings? What can we guess about this person based on what we can see? This is a self-portrait by an artist named Lucinda Redman O'Rear. A self-portrait is an image such as a painting, drawing, or photograph of an artist created by that artist. Lucinda Redman O'Rear was a self-taught artist, which means she did not attend school to learn how to paint. Lucinda's family lived near a school that offered art classes, so it's possible that she may have studied there. However, that would have been rare for a woman during the time that she lived over 150 years ago. What do you think Lucinda might have been like based on what she chose to show us in this painting? What would you include in your self-portrait? What would you choose to show viewers about yourself? Let's see how another artist created their self-portrait. Look carefully at this work of art. What do you notice? Let's zoom in to get a closer look. What new details can you see now? This is a self-portrait by an artist named Jack Whitten. It was created by painting paper, cutting that paper into small squares, and then arranging and attaching the squares to a larger piece of paper. How is this self-portrait different from the last self-portrait we looked at together? This self-portrait is part of a series of portraits made by Jack Whitten that feature black individuals who have contributed to society in important ways like the writer and poet Maya Angelou and the boxer Muhammad Ali. Jack Whitten included himself among these groundbreaking and inspiring individuals. What does this self-portrait tell us about the artist based on what we can see? How will you make your self-portrait? Will you picture yourself doing something you love, like Lucinda Redmond O'Rear? Or will you picture yourself using shapes, lines, and designs like Jack Whitten? There's not a right way to do it. As the artist, you get to feature yourself the way that you want to be seen, because you and your art matter. 
If you'd like, start dreaming up your own self-portrait with the people that you're with. Now that we looked at some art together, let's travel back home so we can make our own art. So think about your most perfect form of transportation. Maybe it's the way that you came, or maybe you've changed your mind and it's something totally different. So think about that form of transportation, get going, and let's head home. For our art making project today, we are going to be making our own self-portraits. So we've seen how two artists created very different portraits of themselves. And I'm going to show you one way of making a self-portrait, but remember, you're the artist. So you can make your self-portrait using any materials you'd like in any way that you like. So today I'm going to show you how to make a continuous line self-portrait. And we're going to need just a couple different materials to do that. So we're going to need a piece of paper to draw on. I just have some plain white paper, but you can use any paper you have, any color, shape, or size. Um, we're going to need something to draw with. So I have some markers here, some colored pencils, a regular pencil, but you can use anything you have, pens, pencils, paint, if you want to use paint. Um, and then I also have a mirror. So we've been using our mirror a lot today and we're going to continue to use our mirror to make our own self-portraits. So you can have a little handheld mirror, you can do some drawing um, wherever you have a mirror on the wall in your home, in your bathroom, or really anywhere. So I'm gonna set my mirror up so that I can see it, because remember, we're drawing ourselves today. And to start, uh, I'm gonna use a marker to draw today just because it's a little bit easier to see. And when we say a continuous line self-portrait, that means that we are going to make our portrait by drawing, but we're gonna use one line the whole time, which means we're not gonna pick up our pen or pencil or marker or whatever it is that we're using. Now it sounds like it might be difficult, but it's actually really fun and you can do it really any way that you want. Um, so I'll show you, let's, let's do one together, okay? So I'm gonna start and remember, I'm not gonna pick up my marker the whole time and I'm gonna look at myself in my mirror that's kind of off to the side here. And so you can think about starting with any body part that you want. So I'm kind of starting at the top with my eyes, working down towards my nose. I'm gonna make my eyebrows here. And now since I'm kind of at the top, I'm gonna make some waves with my hair. And as you can see, you can really make this however you want. So I love having fun with this and kind of making these different kind of portraits, maybe that aren't super realistic or it doesn't really look like me in real life, but I can kind of add elements that might look like me. So I kind of got my wavy hair here. I might want to add in my ears that kind of peek out here. And now remember, I'm not picking up my marker, so I'm going to go back so I can add my ear on the other side. I can add my neck. And your portrait, your self-portrait, can feature any part of you that you want in any way that you want. So that's my continuous line self-portrait right here. Now, another way that you can do it, and I think is a fun way to do it, is to also not look at your paper while you're drawing. So I'm gonna set this one aside. I'm gonna do another one. I'm gonna use a different color marker this time. I'm gonna use blue. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna make my self-portrait. I'm gonna look at myself in the mirror, but this time, I'm not going to look at my paper. I'm just gonna look at the mirror and I'm not gonna pick up my marker. So we can kind of see, see what happens. And so I'm kind of starting in the same way that I did, but I might do something a little different here. So now I'm gonna go and do my mouth and I'm looking at my, I might try to do my wavy hair again here. And remember, I'm not looking at my paper, I'm just looking at the mirror. <laughs> and the fun part is looking at it when you're done. So now I'm looking at it and it looks a little different than the last one that I did, but kind of the same. Um, and this is a really fun thing to do with other people too. So if you, it's really fun to do it as a self-portrait, to think about your own features and to look really closely in the mirror. 
Um, but it's also fun to do with other people. So you can draw other people and kind of do this same practice. So what you can do now is with your continuous line portraits, and remember you can make so many of these, they're really kind of fast and fun and easy to make, is you can go back and kind of add some details or do some coloring. So my, I might add, I might have my colored pencils here and I might add in some details to my continuous line self-portrait here. And remember the best materials to use for this project are the ones that you already have. And this is such a simple thing to do. All you really need is any kind of piece of paper and something to write with, which is what makes it really fun. And I really like doing this as a self portrait because it really makes me stop and look really closely. Uh, which sometimes we don't do very often. We're kind of rushing or just going from one thing to the next. So this kind of really helps me stop and look and think about what I'm doing. I might add in my eye color here. It also kind of helps you look a little closer at yourself, maybe to some features that you might not notice or that you might not pay attention to. And this can also be a fun opportunity to do something totally different. So like I said, we looked at some really different kind of portraits today. We looked at one that was more realistic or kind of um, what you might think of yourself in real life. And we also looked at one that was more abstract or it featured lines and shapes and designs and didn't really think about what um, the artist looked like in real life. So you can kind of think about how you wanna do your self portrait do you want to make it more abstract or more realistic? And do you want to include any other kind of features in your self-portrait? So do you want to draw yourself doing something that you love or including objects that you like or things that you like to do or people that you love? It's totally up to you. Let's see, I had on a blue shirt today so I might kind of add in my blue collared shirt here. And I really like doing these kind of quick and, quick and simple, not thinking about it too much. But remember, you're the artist, so you get to do it however you want. And some more details around the eyes. I think this looks really cool. So that's our really simple, quick and easy way to do a continuous line self-portrait. Thank you for joining me today here at We Wednesday. I hope you had fun. I wanted to show you some other self-portraits that I made. So these are the ones that we made together. This is my continuous line self-portrait that I made while I was looking at my paper in the mirror, but not picking up my marker. And then this is the one that I made where I wasn't looking at my paper and I kept my marker down the whole time and I also filled in some details. And then I had so much fun just making a bunch more that I just kept going. I just, I couldn't stop myself. So this is a really fun thing to do just over and over again. And you can kind of see how different they are depending on how you're feeling or the time of day or what kind of day it is that you're having. I did these on uh, another day, not today. So I think they look a little bit different than the ones that I made today with you. So we would love to see your self-portraits in whatever way that you decide to make them, whether it's a continuous line self-portrait or something totally unique and different. You can share them with us on social media and use the hashtag STLArtMuseum and WeWednesday. We hope to see you next time. Keep on creating. Bye.